Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R630 and specifically we're going to go over the memory inside. And this will be the uh, second part of our series on the R630 so if you're just catching this one uh, we're going to do a whole thing going over everything from uh, memory CPUs, drives, NVMe, uh, how to install your NIC, upgrade your BIOS, uh, all the different RAID options, how to put it in a rack, how to install VMware, you name it, we're going to be doing it all so click that subscribe and let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R630. As we discussed, this is going to be uh, specifically focused on the memory inside, but we do have a bunch of other um, uh, videos that are going to be covering different options. So if you're interested in something else, please check that out. Uh, as far as the RAM is concerned, it takes DDR4 memory. There's 24 DIMM slots inside. Uh, you, you can take a number of different speeds. You can do 2133, 2400, or 2666. I will note with 2666, it's actually going to clock back down to 2400, so the true fastest speed is actually 2400 so uh, I do like to tell people that just in case you have 2666 laying around or you're just you know uh, keeping one module in stock to work for a couple of different systems uh, it will in fact work okay as far as different sizes are concerned you can go as low as a 4 gig 8 gig 16 gig 32 gig or all the way up to a 64 gig I will note with 64 gigs you can only use those with one type of RAM and that brings us to what type of RAM does the R630 accept? Well, there's two types of RAM. You can use ECC registered, known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduce, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 768 gigabytes using 2432 gigs at 2400 speed. Whereas with ECC red, I'm sorry, whereas with a load reduce, you can actually do double the scalability and you can max out at 1.5 terabytes using 2464 gig modules at 2400 speed. So there's a noticeable uh, uh, difference in between them as far as if you're trying to max it out. If you're just using it for um, you know everyday use and you're not maxing out, both uh, both options are really great options. You don't have to worry about one being better than the other. The thing that makes LR DIMMs better is it you can do a higher scalability, and outside that, it's it's you know performance-wise the same. So all right, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, the modules, let's go ahead and show you how to actually upgrade them, how to install them. If you're not maxing it out, which slots do you actually install them? We'll cover all that, but before we do, I'm going to grab my EST gloves and be right back. All right, now that I have my EST gloves on, we're safe to open the machine. First things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock. Pop it open like any Dell machine you've ever been in before. All right, so as we discussed, we're doing a series. Uh, we'll cover all these other components inside as we move forward, but this will specifically be focused on the DIMMs, and we're going to show you how to upgrade the DIMMs and how to do that all properly. So um, as we discuss the DIMMs, some of the things that's most important is the memory channels and understanding the memory channels because that tells you where to actually install your DIMMs. So first things first, this is CPU 1. CPU 1 is going to control the 12 DIMM slots over here. CPU2 is going to control the 12 DIMM slots over here. And this is important because um, if you were only, for instance, running one CPU, none of the DIMM slots over here would actually be able to be used. Realistically, though, if you're using this machine, I highly recommend that you put in two CPUs as the best way to go. And so as far as installing it works, it, it's really important that you pay attention to the channels. So if you look at the color coding here, you'll notice that there's three different colors, and that actually helps you to understand um, not only which, you know, or which slots to put them in, but it lets you know that there are four four memory channels per CPU and within each channel there are three DIMM slots per channel okay and you can tell it by the color so for instance white is the first DIMM slot of the channel um, so white is the first DIMM slot of the channel followed by black and then green and it goes back to white and then black and then green and you come over here it's white black green so you can see that's the different channels okay so what makes this important is let's just say you weren't maxing out your R630 let's say you were only putting in 64 gigs or 96 gigs or 128 gigs or something like this you want to spread your modules out in a way that you maximize your overall performance what you don't want to do is just go you know shove them in the first six slots you see over here because those aren't that's not the way to do it what you would end up doing is overloading two channels and you would have nothing else working for you right so what you'd want to do is actually start here at a1 this white tab i just pushed in that's that's a1 and then you come back here and this is a2 this uh, next white tab and you come back over here and this is a3 the white tab on the outside 
and then A4, the white tab right there. So let's just say you were putting in four 16 gigs or four 8 gigs. You would want to put them in the first four white slots. Okay, that would be the proper way to do it. Now let's say you're putting in eight DIMMs. You'd want and you had two CPUs, assuming here. You'd want to come back over here, and you're going to want to put them in. This outside one is actually B1. Okay, and then this white one right here is B2. And then you come back over here, and the white tab on the inside, or I'm sorry, on the outside, is B3, and then this is B4. So again, white is the start of the channel. So if you're putting in eight modules, you put them in the eight white slots. If you were putting in 16 modules, what you want to do then is then start working on the black slots. So then it would be A5, A6, A7, A8. So now I've moved in the black slots, okay? And then you'd come back over here, B5, B6, B7, B8. And then once you've finished all the whites and all the blacks, then you go to the greens, okay? And then you go right back to the start of the greens right here. Come over here. Just that simple. So that's how you do it. And honestly, if you're maxing it out, it really doesn't matter. You can start one way and just fill them all up because you're going to end up filling them all up anyways. What's important is when you're not maxing it out, you want to have a nice, even distribution. And, and think of it like this. You know, Do you want two, two guys working and doing all the work and two guys sitting to the side? Or do you want all four guys working, right? So you, you in essence, just want to have a nice, even distribution. All the channels doing the same amount of work. This boosts your overall performance, okay? All right, so now that uh, we've uh, shown the channels and how to actually install them properly, we'll go to actually install them, and we'll show you a few more tips along the way. Um, and one of the things I do want to note, if you're at home and you're wondering, man, I don't know if I can do this. You know, this looks kind of tough. Honestly, this is one of the easiest upgrades to do. I think it'll be um, very simple for you to do. Uh, this is a, an office server that you have, and you're not a true technician. Don't worry. You can definitely do this. Uh, one, one of the things that makes it easy, too, you won't be able to see on camera, but on the back side right here, Everything is labeled on the motherboard. It's all labeled on the internet as well. We have it on our website as well. This is a, a very simple uh, overall upgrade to do. Uh, so if you're not a you know a true technician, don't worry. This is a, a simple thing to do. So all right. So one of the things I, I want to point out as we get rolling here, um, I like to pop all my tabs open before I insert my modules. Um, and you don't have to do this, but I personally like to do it because I don't want the tabs fighting me. So when I go to install a module, I'm just, my goal here is to keep the machine safe, keep the parts safe. Um, it takes me a couple extra seconds, no big deal. Um, I just want everything to come out working and not create any additional issues. Okay, so now that we've shown you that, another tip that I recommend is if you look right here, there is a notch in the middle of, well, let me rephrase that. It's not actually perfectly centered, but it's kind of in the middle. There's a notch known as a key. Uh, this key is important because it's not perfectly centered. It's just off slightly, so you have to line your module up just perfectly, otherwise you could potentially uh, damage the DIN slot or you can damage the leads on your module and you don't want to have a broken module, you don't want to have a broken motherboard, so neither of these are a situation you want. So it's a simple thing. Um, you'll notice if you, uh, we, we can zoom in right here, if you look at the, uh, the DIM slots themselves, there's some tabs in the middle that stick up um, and they flip flop depending on which side of the board you're on. So just make sure that you're, you're careful with that. It's one of the most common problems that I see is someone just breaking a module from you know being careless. And honestly, it's, it's a really easy thing to do because you get in a good flow, you're, you're moving them over and all of a sudden it flip flops and you just have to be, you know, be careful with it, okay? So in this case, it's actually gonna be this way. So I'm gonna go ahead, line everything up properly get it set up. And so the next thing I want to point out is if you notice I'm not holding the module, the module is, you know, sitting there, but it's not actually properly seated and it's not fully seated. You want to hear these two clicks. So those two clicks let you know that the tabs that we've been talking about, the white tabs here, have actually latched on to the side and there's a notch carved in the side of the module and it pulls it down so that the leads are fully inserted into the DIMM slot. Um, this is really important. One of the things that I also tell people to look for at the very end, 
you'll notice the tab right here is, is much further in, and these are all sticking out. If you have one that's not perfectly flush with the rest, that means the module's not perfectly seated, and that's a very, very common user error where someone thinks they have a bad module and it's just not properly seated. I tell people this all the time. You, you could be a technician for 20 years. You could be your first day on the job. It's a very easy mistake to make, uh, so just make sure it's properly seated and double-check everything on the back end, okay? So, all right, so we've done A1. So now we're gonna come in, uh, make sure everything's lined up properly again. We're gonna install it into A2. Make sure we hear both clicks. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna make sure we have everything lined up properly. And we're gonna install it into A3. And do note that this did actually flip flop as far as the way that it is lined up. Then we're gonna do A4, okay? And we're going to swing back around, and we're going to hit A5, which is the uh, black slot over here. And this is would be the proper way if you're doing actually one CPU. Otherwise, we would continue on like I was discussing earlier, and you'd hit the white slots on the outside. Uh, but I'm actually going to be fully maxing it out, so I'm just kind of speeding up a little bit as far as the overall uh, way to show you how to do this. So the black, again, is the second slot in the channel. It's going to flip over here. All right, so perfect. So just like that, um, you can get the idea now if we were going to put in uh, eight modules, the actual way I would really do it, like I said, is the first white, and then if we were putting in 16, it would be the whites and the blacks, and then if we're putting in all 24, it would be in uh, the whites, blacks, and greens, which is what I'm actually about to do is I'm going to load this up. Uh, we're putting in 768 gigs total. These are 32 gigs, so we're going to load this up, and we'll be right back. All right, so we've completely loaded this up. We've put in 2432 gigs, it's going to be 768 gigabytes. It's going to be a pretty awesome configuration overall for this machine. Um, one of the things that I, I discussed in the beginning that I would um, you know, note right now, I like to check all my tabs. You see how they're all flush? Everything is nice and clean. So what I was talking about where it might be off a little bit, you might have a tab that, like that one's obvious, it's kind of sticking out, but it might be something a little less obvious like right there where it's just barely, barely sticking out. And hopefully you can see that on the camera. Maybe we can scroll in to be able to see that. But uh, right there, just that little bit, the module lifts up and the, le the leads aren't properly connected. And it'll actually, this will show as a failed module right now because it's not per uh, properly installed in there. And so you hear that little click, it, it's now fully seated. So that's one of the things I always just tell people, just double check, just a little bit could be off and boom, you have a problem. So, all right, uh, now that we're done, one of the things I did want to tell you is if you're looking for any memory upgrades for your R630, we would sure love the opportunity, opportunity to earn your business. We carry all sizes and speeds in stock. Uh, we'd love to be able to help you with your upgrades or if you're even just looking to build out an R630, we custom build them all the time. We'd love to build you a 630. Uh, please email our team at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Uh, we'd love the opportunity to earn your business. All right. Uh, next Next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and we're going to put the top back on and we're going to call it a day. If you made it this far, click that like, smash that subscribe. Take care guys, you have a great day.